Okay, so this is going to be part two of my two-stroke engine. Well, part three that I've mentioned it in, but part two of it, the video being fully about the two-stroke. Um, in this video, I fixed my engine mount issues. I just took some 90-degree uh, steel, I don't even know what you'd call that, 90-degree steel, extruded steel. Um, and then I made mounts out of that for both sides. Um, the next thing I need to do is I made this because before it was flat and I did not really think that through because I was just trying to get it done as quick as I could. So when these bolts would go through there, I'm sure most of you guys can already see the issue. It sticks out. I made it work, but it needs it needed to be changed. So I got rid of that and I made this one, but then realized this isn't perfectly flat here. Uh, it sticks out just a little bit there and then down here as well on the other nut. So I'm just gonna make more cutouts on the other side so that will, so when that goes on there, it will be perfectly flat against there. Um, and I decided not to, f not to sand, not to use a grinder and flatten that down, just because I have a 3D printer. Why don't I put it to use? I can just make cutouts on the bottom there, just like on top, and boom, don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I made the made the new engine mounts. Those things are not going to be breaking. Um, I also made this piece right here which is so that my ground is held on there better instead of it just being underneath the spark plug it's actually held on there by a screw other than that i am getting close to being able to test it again i fixed the ignition system and that was actually one thing that happened in the last video why it wasn't running is while it was running this thing was on there and it fell off and it fell off and it w they it wore away really quick so in order to stop it from falling off, it's still gonna wear away fairly quick, but in order to stop it from falling off, I just made it longer. My phone will focus. I just made it longer, 15 millimeters longer, so that, that more of it is hot glued on there. And the reason why I'm using hot glue is because I wanna be able to take it apart when I'm done. Because if I can't take it apart and it wears out, um, I have to remake the new a new ignition thing and take apart another light switch. So yeah, that is part, this is going to be part one, uh, there will be more in this video, but yeah, that's it for today at least. So I've got the new one of these printed out that has the cutout in the back, and it worked pretty well. It's not completely fixed it, but it's still a little bit off, but it's a lot better. Um, the one important part I somehow forgot to mention uh, was this, which is stopping it from slipping, which I used in my last video. Uh, and I didn't mention it there either. But basically, uh, there's two nuts there for these 3 8 inch bolts. And what I can do, and what I have on here is some quarter inch thick uh, steel flat bar, which is way overbuilt for it. And then nuts welded on top and bottom here, which is why they, these have holes in each side. Uh, and then the flywheel and starter get mount, mounted onto that. But this, I use, since I'm using steel nuts on there, I can cinch this up with an impact so I don't have to worry about it slipping. And I am getting farther. It's very close to being able to be tested. In fact, I might be testing it tomorrow, but I'm just making this because somehow I forgot to mention uh, the most important part, which is why I had to remake all of this. So yeah, that's that. And I guess tomorrow, hopefully I'll be testing it. Okay, so I'm back in the house and I've been doing a, quite a bit of testing off camera to just see if I can get any signs of life out of this engine. And I put a pull starter on it too small, I can't get it turned over. I did reduce the compression ratio. Before it was at a 10 to one, now I've got it at about a six and a quarter to one, so it's easier to pull over, waiting for this uh, RTV silicone to cure now, still sticky. Um, and I replaced the piston ring, because after some testing, the uh, I for, when I'd cut the exhaust port, there was a chunk sticking on the inside and it cut the O-ring, so I lost compression there. Um, but I'm having two main issues now. The first, which is probably the is probably the more important issue, is my ignition system. Um, it works, but I'm relying on this being glued onto a little piece on here. That's glued onto there, and that keeps falling off of there because it's hot glued on there, so I can replace it. So I'm gonna have to think up a new solution for that. But that right there being glued on there isn't been working or hasn't been working. So that will have to be revisited and I'll have to remake that. But also, I don't think I'm building enough pressure in the crankcase in order to push gases through the transfer port and into the cylinder. 
I don't think I'm getting enough, uh, enough compression inside the crankcase in order for it to work. So I have two issues that I should start with solving. And so for the crankcase, I have everything sealed with RTV here, but I think what's happening is there's no seal on around here, which I'm going to replace by buying a 9.5 millimeter inner diameter O-ring, which the shaft is 10 millimeter outer diameter. So I'm gonna buy some O-rings for that and remake these plates right here to have a little groove for the O-ring to sit in. And then my second place is through the exhaust port. When the piston goes up, it's 3D printed, so it's not exactly perfectly sealed without the O-ring on it. So I think what's happening is the when it goes down, it's the air is just coming up through there. And I have a fix for that as well. I think what I can do for that is I can buy, I can use some JB Weld, get a new cylinder, take the piston out, or make a new one just, just so I have a new one because I have a 3D printer, why not? And then what I can do is I can take some of that copper pipe, I can put uh, cover the uh, side, that both sides, I guess, if I wanted to, with JB Weld, put a whole bunch of oil inside the uh, copper pipe and push the piston down in there so that I get a perfect seal on the piston. And I think that I think that'll help a lot with that, so I don't lose as much as much uh, as much compression in there in the crankcase. So those are my issues I'm having now. Um, and then I also this is not I'm not quite there yet, but I got to make the uh, I got to make that bigger in there, so that because uh, I can't it won't turn over all the way. It's extremely difficult to turn over. I should have took a video of that that'd be cool to put in here. But I literally wasn't strong enough to turn it over. That was before I reduced the compression ratio because I just did that tonight. But two days ago when I was testing this, I just literally couldn't get it to turn over. I wasn't strong enough and I couldn't pull hard enough. But yeah, so I got a couple things to fix. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll be able to start working on it again. I already started working on up upgraded or updated ignition system. So yeah, uh, that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave a like and leave your ideas in the comments. I want to hear what you guys think I should do and what you guys think uh, I, c I can do with this engine uh, now with what, with what I've told you guys. But thank you and stay tuned for the next video.